um, show you how we fill the role of a regional um, uh, center. And uh, um, then, uh, as it was already mentioned, uh, it's very close to the function and role that the Africa CDC has. Um, yes, as the previous uh, speakers before me, I uh, have no conflict uh, to, of interest to declare. Um, and ECDC is an EU agency, a European Union agency. Um, and we are the European Union agency for infectious diseases. But there are EU agencies for other areas in life as well. Um, and uh, EU agency is a decentralized uh, body for a specific technical area. Uh, so we provide the EU Commission, the EU Parliament, the EU Council and the EU Member States with uh, specialized knowledge. We have a certain degree of independence um, and we have our own budget. However, this budget comes from the European Commission and then you see that the uh, degree of independence is well, relative. Um, we were established in 2005. One year ago, we moved in new premises. Um, we have 280 employees, and out of the currently 28 uh, EU nationalities, our staff represents 27. So only Luxembourg is not, not represented right now. We have an annual budget of 59 million, and that includes everything. So the, the premises, the whole infrastructure, the staff, and our operational money. Our mission is enshrined in our founding regulation, a legal act from the European Council and Parliament, and is uh, fixed in uh, that uh, we should identify, assess and communicate current and emerging uh, threats uh, to uh, human health by infectious diseases. So our mandate is infectious diseases and it is risk assessment not risk management. The risk management at EU level is done by the European Commission and of course the countries are responsible for the risk management in their own area. Under the current strategic framework that we have that will end uh, at, at the end of uh, next year, we want to be a, a strong and trusted partner enabling and supporting the Member States and the European Commission in protecting everyone in the EU equitable from communicable diseases. And you will be now surprised because our strategic work areas are exactly as the Chair just described. So we have um, see our tasks uh, in providing evidence for the decision making and that is through the analysis of our surveillance data targeted and tailored also so that the countries can take uh, actions uh, as necessary for their own situation and providing uh, uh, evidence-based uh, guidance, scientific guidance. The second part is support in strengthening the public health systems and we do this in two ways. Uh, by having the training program, EPIET, it was already mentioned, uh, with the path for epidemiology and laboratory microbiology, but also strengthening the general preparedness infrastructure, and I will uh, go a bit more into this. The third area is uh, our support to uh, the response to threats. So while we cannot do the risk management ourselves, we can support the member states when we, they request from us in their risk management. So in the outbreak investigations, whatever, um, to whatever extent they, they, they like. Um, and we work from a core of scientific excellence. And we have defined scientific excellence for us being independent, high quality, and relevant. And it is very important that all three elements are present. So uh, any guidance that we produce that is independent and high quality, but not relevant to our partners, is useless. It's a waste of time and money. Um, and we do this, um, as you uh, um, uh, may see, from a disease-specific point of view, but also from a, pon uh, a public health function point of view. And uh, so the, the core functions uh, are listed here, and I will go in some of them uh, a bit more in detail in the, in the um, uh, further course of my presentation. 
So, <clears throat> our first uh, um, uh, aspect is surveillance, and we have two pillars. The indicator-based surveillance, that's the uh, traditional notification data, analysis, and so forth, which is uh, quite comprehensive, but sometimes slow. And uh, this is why we have the second pillar, the event-based surveillance or epidemic intelligence. And each day at 11.30 Stockholm time, a round table meets to um, discuss all the signals coming out of those two uh, pillars. And then decide uh, what, uh, uh, what, to, what to do, um, have an initial assessment. If it's not a threat, we discard it. Uh, if it uh, needs follow-up, it goes into the circle and will be followed up. Or if it needs to enter the response uh, section, um, in uh, uh, first an internal response, which means that we prepare a rapid risk assessment of the situation. And uh, if the uh, request come, then we come also to support and deployment of, of uh, staff. So um, that is a, a, um, a picture of our daily roundtable. You see it's quite a lot of people involved because we try to assemble all the, the, the functions and disease groups and we use our emergency operations center for this uh, in case we don't have a public health emergency. Now what I have listed here are um, emergency operation, when we activated our e e uh, uh, EOC in the past years, some examples from 2007 to 2018, and you probably can, cannot see it clearly, but most of these um, uh, reasons why we mobilized our public health uh, emergency uh, plan originated from outside of the EU. And that is important to keep in mind because I, um, uh, it has some implications which I come back uh, later. Uh, here I have also listed the, 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 the deployments that we have supported uh, outside of the EU, but we do this of course also inside the EU. So we support of course also our, our member states with, um, uh, with, with staff and support. Now, John already mentioned uh, that uh, the, the contribution of these regional centers to health security. And I pretty much see all our work as a contribution to health security. And you see this red dotted line is the, 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 the normal uh, cycle that you have when you have an outbreak. You have the phase where you can do prevention um, and then the phase where you do preparedness and surveillance to surveillance going over into early warning when there is a, a signal and then uh, uh, culminates in the outbreak response and uh, assistance and then the recovery where you try to analyze the outbreak, learn lessons and prepare better for the, for the next occurrence of the cycle that will come um, uh, definitely. So the key principles for our uh, for our uh, preparedness and response work is that uh, our activities should add value uh, and address the gaps that the member states and the European Union has. Um, it should be activities that are complementary uh, to those what the Commission and the, the member states already do. Um, uh, we see this as our core functions, and for us, uh, the, the, the emphasis right now in the work that we have with the countries is to support the interoperability of uh, the preparedness uh, plans and, and um, uh, ideas. Interoperability not only with um, between the countries, but also within the countries in the different sectors. Because uh, what uh, became, becomes apparent every time you have such a crisis is that it's in the end, not, not if, uh, the, the health sector is in the end not even the leading part uh, in this if you have a pandemic. It's, it's others um, uh, that uh, um, have to be in the, in the loop as well. And sometimes in the national um, uh, crisis preparation, uh, usually, it's the Ministry of Interior that takes the, that, that, that takes the lead. Um, so we have developed a lot of partnerships with health and non-health international organizations to be sure to address all of this. Now here, I would like to just briefly go into our um, 
um, uh, that, that a bit more detailed in what, how we do that. So first is the identification also here of evidence in literature reviews, case, uh, uh, case studies, the dissemination uh, of good practice so that um, countries that went already through a crisis can share their experience with the other countries so they can use it for the preparing themselves for, for their crisis. Uh, so we have tools that we have and we have workshops uh, that we do. And some of these workshops we actually use also for capacity strengthening and um, uh, in training and simulation exercises. Now, simulation exercises are quite important, so we have a, a whole program for this. And uh, we have uh, actually uh, annual uh, regional uh, tabletop exercise on a hot topic. And we have usually not uh, um, uh, uh, member states, uh, but sometimes also uh, the surrounding, uh, our surrounding um, member states, or not member states, our surrounding neighbor countries uh, part, uh, as part of these uh, exercises. And uh, sometimes it's also not only health, but also the animal side, the veterinary side, because here uh, outbreaks uh, very often occur. Um, uh, I, I mentioned already the training, and here I want to go also into EPIET and, and UFEM, uh, that our trainees in this two-year program also go through these kind of exercises, so that they also learn how to organize such exercises and how to uh, use them. Um, and you see that uh, we have really also visitors coming to us. Um, to, um, uh, we, we have uh, 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 study visitors, we have visiting groups uh, whom we try to um, familiarize with our wor uh, uh, work. And we also work uh, very much with WHO in such um, um, uh, in the preparation and, and performance of these exercises. One has only taken two uh, place two weeks ago in Romania uh, on an AMR um, a ministerial conference where we had an, uh, a simulation exercise for a multi-resistant AMR case that traveled between the EU countries. Big um, uh, advice that is the ex um, uh, expert opinions, we have systematic reviews and we have public um, uh, guidance. And usually when we have expert opinions where the evidence is so-so, um, uh, then we also put it out for public consultation so that we get a really everything, every input that, uh, that, uh, that there is. We have a program that has uh, received quite a lot of attention and requests from also international that's called EU Lab Cup. It's the capa uh, capacity and capabilities uh, in uh, the microbiology of our countries that are systematically assessed every two years. They are scored and uh, we are now seeing, we have done this now I think three, three or four times, and we see that the score overall for the EU but also for the countries is, is um, increasing and the gap is closing. So these monitoring, kind of monitoring instruments are also quite important. And the SCAIDE is a very um, uh, important networking event where we also had last year uh, John as a, as a keynote speaker. I can't go now into our disease-specific work, but if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know. Because I would like to uh, speak a bit more about uh, our partners in this work. We have a, a whole series of, par of partners in the EU context. The, as mentioned already, the Commission, the Member States, the other agencies, the Parliament and the Council. But we have a whole array of partners that are not in the EU. Uh, 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 WHO, other CDCs, uh, NGOs, we work with the research community, um, other countries and to a limited degree also with industry. This is an example of a collaboration between three EU agencies, the, uh, uh, us for infectious diseases, the medicines agency for the monitoring of uh, uh, consumption of antimicrobials in the veterinary sector and EFSA for the um, monitoring of antimicrobial resistance in, vet uh, in, in, in the veterinary sector. And we do every two, three years a joint report on antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial consumptions in animals and humans for the whole 500 million in the EU. And that, I think, is uh, in that sense uh, one health report that is, I think, uh, unique in the, uh, in the world.
Now, our partnership outside the EU is, um, uh, uh, we have several layers. So the green countries here is the EU member states, the orange is the, um, uh, the uh, our enlargement countries, and in the enlargement countries, um, we have done assessments. We have done um, for the for the infectious disease system. We have done the um, uh, follow up, and uh, now involve them step by step into our our work. Then we have a layer, and that's now in blue. That's the uh, European Neighbourhood Partnership Policy uh, countries, and you see that there's an overlap between these countries and the Africa CDC in Northern Africa. Um, and so we, um, uh, John and I, we have said that this is the area where we really need to work cl very closely together. And the last layer that we have is really um, uh, with international strategic partners. And here we have uh, uh, collaboration agreements with the US CDC, with the China CDC. And I'm really happy that we're making progress in the collaboration uh, agreement with the Africa CDC. Uh, colleagues were there yet last week to, to uh, detail it and I hope I can finalize it with John uh, today or tomorrow. And then we hope we get some funding and can, can, uh, can continue. Um, because it was said before, the, um, uh, the countries cannot do this alone. And the regional centers cannot do this alone. And I also believe one region cannot do this alone. We all live on the same planet. So we have to work all together around the globe. And we have to trust and help each other. And uh, this is why I also was coming here very gladly um, and looking forward to working with the Africa CDC and maybe with all of you. Thank you.